Ladies and gentlemen, what is going on? Welcome back to 4 Strategy Gaming. How's that for an epic introduction? Welcome back. Another team game. It is Thursday. I keep saying that, and it's time for team games. And once more, a 2v2. You know, I'm getting a lot of twos. I think twos are probably more reasonable for me to cast. Threes and fours are a little nuts, but in all honesty, if you have got the games, send them my way. Masters level team games, I want them. Force at forcestrategygaming.com. I will commentate the F out of it. Yeah, that's right. I said it. I went there. So what do we have? Yes, another 2v2. We've got the Terran player Far here as our uh, Aqua Terran. And then, of course, Dragoon. The Protoss player, the purple Protoss player, the Magic Weaver on the other side as the blue Protoss, and the red Terran player, Chuck. So, a Terran and Protoss versus a Terran and Protoss, TP Terran Protoss, is actually what I do twos as. Uh, I play Terran typically, and my buddy Tempest, he plays Protoss, and uh, I, yeah, that's just, I don't know why I said that, but I did. So, we can see right now, actually, Chuck deciding to formulate this wall off. I do wonder... If uh, going into this game, if they didn't know what their opponents were, because nine times out of ten, we are not walling off against a Terran and Protoss opponent, uh, simply because you, if it's not Zerg, you don't wall off. Losing these buildings, it's a big old pain in the rear, and uh, typically just not really worth it. So, very interesting. Now, the flip side of that is hiding tech. If you're trying to hide uh, from your opponent what you have got going on, then formulating a wall can help, but again, once that inevitable push comes, losing these buildings up front, pretty scary thought. So Dragoon moving out with the scout right now and actually dangerously close to dropping that gateway or delaying that gateway from getting pushed. We get to a two gate coming out here for Magic Weaver. Chuck, with that one Rax and also that refinery now, two gate early pressure. That's what is coming. That's what we expect. Now far over here, looks pretty standard uh, as a Terran player. Pretty standard looking build. Back over here, Dragoon looking to play pretty standard as well. So uh, we'll be very interested to see how this two gate uh, plays out. Uh, uh, are they going to go for a legitimate Zealot early rush? Maybe Zealot Marine? Quite possible. The other option, though, is that he wants that second gateway out in time for the Cybercore to finish, allowing him to pump out heavy early Stalkers. That's another option. Clearly, at this point, what we're seeing is not a Zealot rush. Uh, that was my initial thought, but with the Cybernext Core being dropped and no Zealots being produced yet, I'm thinking he just wants heavy, heavy Stalker early on in the game, and that can do very well. Uh, going two racks, uh, just churning out those Stalkers early on. At least I hope that's what Magic Weaver does, because otherwise his build order is just zany as hell. Uh, we can see the Twilight Council, so it looks like Blink Stalkers is what we will be seeing from Magic Weaver. No uh, no Warp Gate research yet. I'm going to leave that because I don't want to see that anymore. <laughs> Back over here, Far uh, does have the bunker coming down up front. We'll be sitting at the three racks. No upgrades coming on through. And back over here, his buddy Dragoon. Corona boosting out the warp gate research, uh, looking to play a little bit more standard. That second gateway timing seems about right. There we go. Finally, warp gate research coming out, starting out with a zealot, in fact. This is a zany build for Magic Weaver. I will be interested to see how this progresses throughout the game. Uh, back over here in another rack. So yes, a three racks also coming out here for Chuck. He does have the stim pack research. Do we finally have any uh, tech coming out here for in terms of research? No. In fact, coming out with this early, early Reaper Scout. And I am loving this. Uh, Reaper Scout's very, very, uh, very underused in all honesty, in my opinion. Uh, very strong, causing a little bit of damage, but primarily scouting, 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 checking the the buildings checking the attachments all of that jazz so here goes the reaper will be making its way right into the red terran player chuck's base and let's see what he can do how much damage does he get done right now should be getting a couple free scv kills just as it does need to be careful oh uh, wow not target firing properly he had a free kill there there's one and should be getting a couple more here as well now we do have a marauder in place so that of course will take care of the reaper uh we do have the marine going down as well for a couple extra free shots on the way out reaper forced to pull back right now so didn't see all that much no he no he really didn't he just really saw this one rax uh, he saw that there was only one gas as well so he knows not any super uh, super crazy tech uh, magic magic weaver calling the hero reaper four kills actually pretty solid and being able to get away with that uh, certainly a uh, a good thing i would if maybe if nothing else just grab the tower and chill out with that because if you don't lose it then it's certainly paid for itself back over here lots of zealots coming through and i was dead wrong yes i was super 
fast charge zealots and that is unreal obviously just sitting on the one gas you do not need two gas if you're massing zealots so going for very very quick um uh, the, the the research researching that charge very quickly rather is what i'm looking to say now we do have this reaper coming up but does it be careful because if he runs into a charge zealot that'll be a big old surprise um but yeah just sitting with the zealots and here goes the reaper trying to move around he is just scouting really he saw the twilight council now i'm sure that he would expect stalkers but he will be running into charge zealots in just one moment and there we go now he is aware so now the uh the the team dragoon and far are fully aware of the fact that charge zealots are in play but how will they be able to deal with it very interesting timing push. I've, I've really never seen this. In all honesty, I mean, this is something that I have not encountered um, in my own game. So pretty nuts, I would have to say. Now, Dragoon moving out with that Observer Scout. Obviously, Observer is something that Magic Weaver lacks because he did go for that fast Twilight Council and that fast charge upgrade. Looks like they're pinging themselves to the back rocks here. So we'll be working down these rocks, uh, trying to take these down quickly and then just run right into the main. We can see, obviously, all preparations for defense here for Far and Dragoon are at the front of the base, that main entrance. That's where all of these depots are that's where all the units are but here we go now fully aware that this push is coming zealots doing what they can to work that down we do have the marines and marauders here of chuck working their way on in as well that range uh, will be coming into play though so wants those marines and marauders to engage instead there we go so Marines and Marauders will be dropping down these rocks and right now repositioning Dragoon and Far getting ready for this. We do have some sentries and this could help a lot with some properly placed force fields. There's going to be some big issues here for Magic Weaver and Chuck. But here comes the push. Where are those force fields? A little late to deal with those Zealots. Zealots moving in, getting a bit of damage off. Now all those Marines and Marauders stimming up, unfortunately, um, in those force fields. Behind those force fields, the Zealots do want to target those down. Ooh, that was a uh, that was a pretty unsuccessful push. A very unfortunate, you know, char charging in there, getting that force field, cutting off the Marines and Marauders from reinforcing those zealots, and on top of that, stimming up, so losing that health. He is really nowhere near medevacs right now. So very, very unfortunate. It uh, looks like, as I mentioned that, he discuss he mentions medevacs. I, I I can't. I don't know what these guys are saying. I'm sorry, guys. I would love to uh, to give my input on their conversation, but I really can't do that. Now, Far sitting so marine heavy. In fact, that looks to be all he has. Yes, just with marines, massing marines. Uh, he does have that combat shield as well as stim pack right now. So there you go. Some, some beefy marines also coming out with that expansion. Dragoon moving into an expo of his own. Back over here, Chuck grabbing his expansion as well so there you go uh, let's take a look is there that transition quite yet no i do not see a factory building for chuck so chuck will just be sticking with these marines and marauders for now uh, not teching up quite yet and we'll be trying to tech up at some point we do have a factory coming out here for far so our Terran player Far is looking to tech up, and right now looks like both teams are content with just macroing up. Far moving down, breaking down these rocks so that they can have access to this high yield expansion. Do we have some tech coming out here for Magic Weaver? Yes, we do. Uh, we do have the Templar Archives in, researching that Sionic Storm, and that will do incredibly well against this Marine Heavy Army here of Far. So excellent decision in terms of tech transition. Well, the Zelt Sub Magic Weaver breaking down these rocks over here, so yes time for some macro basically is what's going on now we did just see a ping did he scout that or yes he did i do not know with what uh quite possibly could have been a scan though so uh yes scouting out this expansion now fully aware of it looks like they are making that move to try to actually go down but at the same time repositioning their units dragoon and far ready to deal with this does have to be careful about those storms charge zealots swooping in couple of force fields but there is the stim there are the storms as well, right on top of all those Marines. Charged Zealots swooping in. It looks like right now, Far and Dragoon are in a little bit of trouble retreating back to the main. And they're actually content with that because they, at this point, will be going straight for that expansion. And the expansion finished. And Dragoon will be losing this. So this is 500 resources right down the drain. The pylon plus this Nexus. Really nothing that they can do to reinforce. They just have to take the loss at that point. And a very smart move there. You'll see a lot of players in this situation. They push back an army, get them right back into the main, and they'll just try to keep walking in. But walking in up onto the high ground into the quick reinforcements of all these production buildings can be very dangerous. And a lot of times it's smarter, you know, if unless you're going for a super early game push and you're going for some sort of six, seven minute timing push, then once you break 10, 12 minutes in game, your primary focus 
focus in all honesty should be shutting down expansions in team games if you can shut down expansions then you are in a prime position shut down your opponent's expansions defend your own um, that's really what you want to be doing so yeah uh, besides early pushes your main focus in the later stages of team games will be your opponent's expansions and that's exactly what we saw Chuck do there uh, pushing the uh, pushing this team back pushing Dragoon and far back into their main and then just sniping that expo that gave them a huge advantage because we've got Magic Weaver just about ready to take this high yield. And then, of course, we have this expansion up here for Chuck. Now, Dragoon is aware of this, scouting that out. We do have also a scan that just went down just to check to see what was happening over here. Uh, expansion attempting to get dropped. and looks like that will right now far grabbing the high yield himself but still uh, Dragoon in a bit of trouble he does need to get up an expansion sometime soon he cannot sit on this one base for too long because that's really not what he wants to be doing now let's take a look at any sort of transitions we can see Far getting that Ghost Academy will begin some Ghosts into play EMP is of course going to help against those high Templar Take a look over here for Magic Weaver. What does he have coming out? Just another gateway. Uh, still sticking with those. Uh, oh my gosh. That is a lot of High Templar. Also sitting with that Archon. A few Zealots in the mix. Chuck just with the Bio Heavy Army. Now finally transitioning here into Medivacs. Um, yeah, so there you go. Bio plus Medivac. Very strong against Protoss. So that's probably his major focus. And then uh, we can see here, of course, the... Uh, the Protoss player Magic Weaver coming out once more with those High Templar and those Charge Zealots, and that's the main focus there. Now, we did just have a ping go down, and it looks like they may actually be getting ready to target down this expansion once more. As I mentioned prior, expansions, that's your number one focus. Later stages of the game in these team games, take out those expansions, and you are sitting pretty. So, yeah, there you have it. Um, Ghosts are starting production right now. Mobius Reactor coming out. We've got some upgrades. Let's take a look at that. Far sitting at 0, zero right now, but he's got some upgrades coming through. Unfortunately, Dragoon sitting at 0, zero. He does have the level 1 upgrades coming. What does Magic Weaver have? Magic Weaver at 0, zero and Chuck at 0, zero. So, uh, unfortunately, neither team really focusing on those upgrades. Instead, trying to churn out those units and get those expansions up. But here comes that push right now from Magic Weaver and Chuck. And how will Far and Dragoon deal with this? The push is coming dangerously close to that expansion. Those Colossus will help a bit watch out for the storms wow the marines just getting shredded there by those storms plus the charge zealots the medevacs helping quite a bit all out of energy turning into archons the stim going down for the bio needs to try to snipe down these colossus there we go getting up nice and close trying to snipe them down they've torn through the rest of the army there for the most part but no those colossus nice and safe tucked away in the back um, now, we do still have these two Archons that are going to help quite a bit against these SCVs. Look at them shred through them. There we go. So, finally, Far and Dragoon managing to defend lots of damage. They lost a ton of units. Those storms were completely devastating. Uh, pretty unbelievable. That's not that nice. Anyways, yeah, there we go. Uh, so, Colossus, as you saw, they're so very strong. The obvious response right now for Chuck is to start churning out some Vikings. So, hopefully, he does decide to do that. Now, we can see right now, second starport coming out. We'll expect a reactor on that as well, allowing him to get those double Vikings to deal with those Colossus much more easily. That will also help against, uh, to, you know, snipe down these Medivacs so that the bio of Far can't really contend with those storms if that comes into play. A couple of Zelts going right into the expansion. Look at this. A small task force can do a lot of damage. There we go. Straight into the resource line, but great reaction there by Chuck pulling back those SCVs as soon as those Zelts came into play. Then responding by bringing down some uh, some of those charged Zealots by Magic Weaver. A couple of the bio units here as well. So that small group of Zealots taking care of. But doing things like that can actually be very, very effective. Especially if players aren't really paying enough attention. Just sending a few units into an expansion can devastate a player. Uh, that is most certainly the case. Would really like to see uh, Magic Weaver and Chuck come out with another expansion. Back over here we can see Far again still sitting very Marine heavy. He is happy with Marine Ghost Medivac. That appears to be his mo here coming out with another expansion as well planetary fortress wise decision sir that'll certainly help against any uh, impending harassment that will be coming later in the later stages of the game take a quick look at the income tab far sitting very pretty with three three bases one of which of course is a high yield unfortunately right now for chuck and magic weaver just on two apiece and there we go finally uh, we are going to have magic weaver move into his third base here and yeah so there you have it very interesting game so far uh, we'll be interested to see how this progresses right now i'm not really given a distinct advantage to either team just because this is such a macro focused game and there really haven't been huge engagements obviously losing this one expansion in there early on certainly hurt uh, Dragoon and Far, but that doesn't necessarily mean they're out of the game quite as of yet.
it's really past this point in the game when he starts to try to expand in these positions on this map that things get a little bit hairy. It's really difficult to defend these. It's so far away from what's kind of the centralized location. You can see uh, Far and Dragoon pretty much sitting around this position. And then at the same time, on the flip side, we've got Magic Weaver and Chuck sitting around here. So when you do try to expand into these positions, it becomes much more difficult to defend. Now, we've got a couple of Vikings trying to snipe some units. They will be walking right under the Marines, though. A free kill there for Far. He did, of course, stim up, but it doesn't really matter because the medevacs are there to heal. And there goes the Stalkers as well. Uh, Magic Weaver mentioning, hey, look, that's a lot of Marines there. Uh, maybe that's a, a tip of the hat there to try to get out some more High Templar, although he has got quite a bit right now. And again, Magic Weaver just sticking High Templar and Charred Zealot. He is uh, once more more than happy with that still no upgrades though and that is um, that's really sad for me to see <laughs> would really like to see these teams start to upgrade now Dragoon does have the 1-0 uh, and we've got 1-1 here for far as well moving into 2-2 and there we go um, now 1-1 here for Dragoon so Far and Dragoon certainly on top of the upgrades. Really like to see that. We have a ghost moving across the map here for Far, and let's see what his plan is. Uh, we do have a nuke coming into play. He doesn't have access to it yet, but he will soon. And uh oh, uh, being detected there. Managed to drop an EMP in time. I'm not sure what detected him. There must be an observer over here, right? There it is. There we go. So there was an observer. So that is what spotted the ghost. Uh, so unfortunately, the ghost kind of suiciding himself. At least he got the EMP off. Now we can see right here. Look at this. Chuck trying to expand right here. And what did I mention? Look how dangerous this is. I mean, he's right next to the Dragoon's expansion. This is a little bit, a little bit concerning. But the problem is, I mean deal trying to push out against that is really really uh, risky you can see far if you know far and dragoon how are they going to hit this expansion they can drop obviously but if you're walking your army look at where it has to go it has to walk up this ramp and then right through there you can take the back side as well um, but still if you go in this direction look how close that is to the opposition uh, so very very dangerous indeed and here comes the attempted nuke right on a lot of army and magic weaver does he see it coming there we go finally moving out of the way he will be losing some power Pylons, though, does it drop? No. Wow. Getting it just in the nick of time. Uh, the Observer Mansion to scout him out and the Zealots taking him down very quickly. So very, very unfortunate. That nuke could have been devastating. I mean, obviously, we saw the units move out of the way, uh, but taking out those pylons certainly would have helped. We do have a blue ping going down. Uh, does want to try to make a uh, make a, uh, make a a walk through to that back door. They don't, uh, yeah, they don't know about this expansion, so they're not aware that Dragoon has expanded here. If they try to push against the back door, um, they are obviously in huge danger of a counterattack. That's the biggest concern, really. Is this a planetary? No, it's an orbital command. So again, another risky situation. Take a look uh, back over here. What do we got going on? Still pretty marine heavy, but starting to throw in actually a lot of marauders into the mix. Uh, sp spreading out these ghosts here as well. Try to contend or avoid maybe any of those feedbacks and or EMPs. Here comes a push right now. Magic Weaver pinging down, telling his ally Chuck to help join the fray. Looks like we are about to see a push. There is a scan and wow, nice EMP. Look at how much of the shield that took away from the Protoss army. That was pretty devastating, but unfortunately, Magic Weaver's just going to pull back and, and that's it. You know what I mean? He's just going to walk away and uh, recharge those shields. And since there's no engagement impending, uh, really not that big of a deal. Another EMP. Oh, no. Wow. Uh, he either walked into that storm and that killed him or there was a feedback. I'm not sure. Chuck saying, okay, go. I think that's the name of a band. I believe so. Let me, let me know if that is. I'm pretty sure that's the name of a band, and I think I've heard their songs, and I like them. You guys like OK Go? Anyways, yes, here we go. Far getting ready to push out. We can see him mobilizing right now as well. Uh, pinging in the middle, realizing that this movement is occurring. Looks like they are trying to get ready to deal with this because there is a push coming out, but this is just Far. The army is split up between Far and Dragoon. They need to be careful. Here come the charge Zealots, getting ready to split them right down the middle, but look at those force fields. Beautiful play. We do have Chuck moving to the back right now, trying to defend because there is possibly a push coming here from far ghost sitting on the high ground are they going to emp or maybe get some snipes look at that all of those high temple are are energy list now is the time please engage this is the perfect opportunity yes they are mobilizing getting ready to engage the high temple are lack any energy we will be seeing no storms don't wait too long don't let them get that energy back up this is kind of a difficult to actually walk into though all those pylons kind of obstructing your ability to engage with those units and retreating just in time but that was a pretty big emp lots of energy loss there we'll be taking the free pylon kills though there you go might as well right why not free pylon kills uh did he yes he supply blocked him right now so magic weaver is sitting at supply block only 134 
available supply. This is a scary, scary moment right now. Here comes the push. We do have a couple siege tanks coming into play. No, not a couple. That is a lot of siege tanks. You need to be careful about walking into that line. And this is really going to come down position to positioning and where they decide to engage. A ghost sneaking forward, but looks like uh, with that scan spotting the army there, deciding to push back. Didn't want to walk into those tanks. Vikings need to be careful. Very, very uh, tenuous situation right here. Blank Stalkers sniping down a few of the Vikings. The Vikings, of course, were trying to do some Colossus sniping. Uh, didn't quite work in their, on their, in their favor, though, or for, on their behalf. Oh, Tank shelling out there on the Ghost. The Observer scouting him out. Wow, two Tank shots, and that bad boy still alive. Nice. Uh, he is sitting at 3-3, of course. And how are the upgrades over here yet for uh, Chuck and Magic Weaver? Still no upgrades for Chuck and Magic Weaver. Oh, that is saddening, I must tell you. Uh, we do have, you know, Far and Dragoon with these upgrades, and that will certainly help. Um, they're really looking to be in a good position. It's kind of a stalemate right now because neither team wants to push. Obviously, walking into tank fire, and now those High Templar have had enough time to actually start to recharge their shields. Scan detecting the fact that those tanks are mobilizing. Looks like they are repositioning right now. Trying to catch those tanks off guard, but tanks line is up, so be careful. Couple of shots taken right there, right in the middle. And uh, what are these charred zealots and high temple are doing? Looks like they are getting ready to reposition. We do have an attempted expansion coming down here for Dragoon. A uh, cloak ghost moving forward, trying to nuke right now. Is he going to get that tank line? This is going to be very close. There we go. Tanks spotting it, moving at the same time. Charged zealots and high temple are moving to the expansion of Dragoon. So now is the time to push. And wow, be careful. The nuke is going to drop on your units. What are you doing? Please, no. Oh, that is the saddest thing I have ever seen. Nuking his own units that is depressing oh my gosh far dropping the lol i am at a loss for words that was a nuke of far's ghost ghost dropped the nuke down to try to break the tank line they pushed he didn't cancel the nuke and he lost it he lost it far just left the game realizing his big big faux pas and oh i'm embarrassed i am really I am saddened. I am deeply saddened. That is the saddest thing I've ever seen in StarCraft. Nuking his own army. And my gosh, that is it. GG. Wow, what a game. This is why I love team games because some of the most absurd things happen. So thank you guys for watching. Thank you for uh, coming along in this magical journey with me. <laughs> so weird. Anyways, yes, uh, thanks again, guys. If you like the content, please subscribe to the channel. I will say once more, if you have got Masters level team games, 2v2, 3v3, or 4v4, please send them to me at force at forcestrategygaming.com. I will be doing commentary on team games every Thursday. Again, thank you guys for watching, and as always, keep watching and keep owning.